Hello folks and welcome back to Whiskey Wars. My name is Sean and tonight we're going to be doing the third round of What Can Blanton's Beat? Tonight Blanton's will face the Wild Turkey lineup. Can it make it through this gauntlet of kicking chickens? Let's find out. All right, folks, here is our lineup for today. We got Russell's 10 year, Blanton's single barrel, Wild Turkey 101, Kentucky Spirit single barrel, Rare Breed, and Russell's single barrel. Lots of single barrels in here. And the question is can one horsey beat six kicking chickens? We're gonna find out tonight. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these things poured and get into them. In glass A, hope you guys can see that, we got Russell's 10 year going in. In glass B, we're gonna have the My Little Pony bottle. We're gonna get some Blanton's in this thing here. It's about time to kill off this bottle. We might be doing that on a uh, live stream coming up. We'll see. In glass C, we have the constant shelf staple the Wild Turkey 101, gotta have that on any good bar, but can it beat a pony? In glass D, we're gonna have Kentucky Spirit, which is just 101 single barrels. This is a store pick, not that that really matters cause either way it's a single barrel. How well will it do? We will find out. In glass E, we have a certainly excellent bourbon, the fantastic rare breed. And finally, in glass F, we got one of my favorite just shelfers of all time, the Russell's Single Barrel. Okay, time to put the drunken Susan to work. Here we go. Let's get these things spun up nice and dizzy, spinning around, trying to not look at the glasses, so there's no way to keep track, but also making sure they behave because they like to slide off. Got to bump them back occasionally. All right, there we go. And I think we're ready. All right, now for sure all these are fantastic bourbons, but let's go ahead and get into these things. We won't be doing any nosing, just gonna go straight for the sip. So here we go. Let's get into glass one, whatever this may be. Here we go, down the hatch. Okay, there is what glass one is. Hope you guys can see that. Hopefully the letter is facing the right way up. No way to know, but uh, you guys tell me. Anyway, whatever that is, uh, it was okay. Uh, it was pretty good. A little bit of sourness going on there. Uh, nice orange citrus notes. Uh, a little bit of sour oak in there. A little bit of lemony kind of stuff going on. Um, decent caramel note. Nice kind of light brown sugar. Uh, a little bit of toasty oak. Just kind of very standard bourbon profiles. One thing I will say is the proof on that kind of hit me hard because that was my first sip of the day and first sip in actually a couple days. So uh, I'll have to go back through and kind of figure out what proof point that really is. It may be lower than I think. Anyway, first sip of the day, let's uh, get some water and then move on to glass two. Okay, glass number two, here we go. Okay, here is what glass number two is. Uh, I will say that one tasted uh, like it was a little older than glass one and very different notes. Uh, got some darker oak tones going on, almost like a light chocolate there. Nice charred oak notes, that which I didn't get in glass one. Uh, also, nice cherry note in there. A little bit of cinnamon, not super spicy though, fairly mellow. Okay, let's move along to glass number three. Okay, glass number three, somewhat similar to glass number two, uh, which tells me these are probably both turkey products, whereas this one may not be. Don't know yet, but uh, that's kind of what I'm getting so far. Similar notes, I would say, having tasted glass three though, this one tastes even like it has more age on it than glass two. Um, at least that's what I'm getting first go round just darker notes that the cherry note on glass three is even darker and kind of more mature tasting than glass two. Uh, it's very nice cherry note, kind of like a black cherry. Uh, and it's kind of like a cherry candy kind of going on there. Nice wood tones coming through, nice toasty oaks, nice warm oak notes, no sour oak notes there at all. There's also a little bit of like a coffee note going on. 
Uh, maybe even like some leathery. It, it just, it has all the things that you would expect from an older whiskey. So again, I have, I'm kind of torn between which is which here because both of these kind of taste like they have some age. But anyway, let's, uh, let's cleanse the palate and move on to glass number four. All right, glass number four, here we go. Okay, now we're getting into some serious candy notes, uh, just like bubble gum, cherry, uh, like cherry candies in like the best of ways, like a, like a cherry Jolly Rancher going on there. Oh, and I didn't show that glass. That's what glass four is. Did I show glass three? We'll, we'll just show it again, just in case. This was glass three. Uh, this is glass four again. So you know what we're talking about. Sorry about the mix up there. If I already showed those, sorry the whiskey's already working. Anyway, glass four. Yeah, nice candy notes. And uh, the finish is still going, long finish. Uh, there is a little bit of ethanol going on there. So that tells me maybe this is higher proof than what I've had so far. Hard to say, but either way, uh, probably my favorite sip so far. Really enjoyed that, nice sweet notes. Uh, you know, kind of the similar notes to what I've said so far, but amped up a little bit and it's more candy for more bubble gum, cherry notes, just uh, the kind of notes that I prefer. So yeah, that's probably the, the uh, front runner so far. Let's uh, get some water and go for glass five. You see this face? This is the face of a person that just drank some awesome bourbon. Let's go ahead and show what that is. Uh, hopefully that's coming through there. Um, now, if I were a betting man, and I know I shouldn't guess early, but that's rare breed. I would almost bet my life on it. I probably shouldn't do that because I could be terribly wrong because granted, these are all turkey products. Uh, so maybe not, but richest mouthfeel so far, darkest notes, uh, proofiest, but in a good way. And I just, I love the finish on Rare Breed. It's like tobacco, like nice sweet tobacco. You got the cherry in there. There's a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of coffee. It's all the dark notes that I look for in a bourbon. And uh, you know, it's, it's still reasonably priced. It has gone up a little bit lately, but I, I'm talking like this is Rare Breed. I don't know. It, it could be, I don't know, it could be Blanton's, I guess. Probably not. Uh, it would be the best blends I've ever had if it is. Uh, anyway, I think that's Rare Breed. You guys, you know, make fun of me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get some water and go on to our glass glass. Okay, here is glass number six. Um, I'm a little confused now. I thought I knew what some things were. I still feel like I have an idea what this is. I, I'm pretty sure that's Rare Breed, but um, the rest of these, I don't know. This is fairly similar to this and this. So I don't know. Uh, either way, good, very typical wild turkey profile, cherry, cinnamon, uh, kind of a bubblegum note going on there, a little bit of vanilla. Uh, and then, of course, just your kind of standard uh, bourbon notes, although not a whole lot of brown sugar because that doesn't really come through in many turkey products. A little bit of caramel there, though, and, of course, oaks and all those good things. So now, folks, we're going to uh, blind these off-camera, in which uh, if you want to see the off-camera stuff, then, you know, join our Patreon because that's where you get to see me, uh, you know, drink a whole lot of whiskey way too fast. And then here when I come back, you'll understand better why I can't talk. So yeah, uh, if you want to see that, join the Patreon, plus all kinds of other stuff like, uh, you know, free samples of stuff that I own. So, you know, I hand deliver them because I'm a nice guy. Anyway, yeah, we'll be back in a second. Okay, and we are back. And now it's time to rank these things. So let's get into it. That was a lot of whiskey. Let's see how they placed. First off, we got in sixth place. We have glass A. And glass A is Russell's Single Barrel. So, sorry folks, that's last place. Can't say I'm super surprised. Lowest proof point. It does have a nice age statement, but that's never really done it for me. I like a little more proof in my whiskey. And although it is nice, 
this is a pretty stacked deck here. So let's move along to glass number two, fifth place. And that is, let's see, get this uh, facing the right way for you guys, D. D is, let's see, D is Kentucky Spirit. Again, not a huge surprise. Uh, this was not my favorite batch of Kentucky Spirit, although I've never really felt like I had a good one, uh, which means that 101 is in the top four, which is interesting because both of these are more expensive. Okay, move these back in camera. Wasn't sure if they were. So now let's move along to fourth place. Fourth place is B. B is... The Horsey. It's the My Little Pony bottle, the Taterade, whatever the heck. There you go. Horsey. Fourth place. That seems to be the position it always finishes in. I don't know, there seems to be a theme here. Uh, let's uh, move along though. And we got glass C. C is Wild Turkey 101. How about that? Isn't that something? 101 beat Russell's 10, Kentucky Spirit, three times the price point, and Blanton's, which is also three times the price point, if you can find it in MSRP. Let's, I mean, let's be fair here. You're not going to find it at that price, but uh, even if you could, it would still be three times the price of this bottle. So that kind of shows you where 101 really is. Now, we're going to move these things off the table, set these down here, and move along to what came into, uh, you know, first and second, not these glasses. What's first, what's second? This is first, this is second. What's what here? Let's go with fifth place here. Not fifth place, second place. Here we go, the big reveal, F. F is second place, Russell's. I have to say, so this is just the standard offering, not a store pick or anything. It is good, but the store pick I have behind me is phenomenal. So, you know, it is what it is, which means that Rare Breed, and this is a heck of a bottle of Rare Breed, again, so these bottles do vary. This is a single barrel. This is a small batch product. Nonetheless, they, there is certainly variance, and if you're comparing them side by side, uh, rare breed to rare breed, uh, Russell single barrel to Russell single barrel, you notice the differences. And I would say this is a kind of average Russell single barrel, and this is a kind of exceptional rare breed. So with that said, you know, maybe this placement could be different if you're comparing different rare breed to a different Russell single barrel because they both vary. But nonetheless, that was the finishing tonight. And I gotta say, not really disappointed or super surprised. Rare breed is always at the top of my list and Russell single barrel is always right there with it. So. Yeah, that was the placement, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Did you expect the pony to finish higher? Did you think it could kick the kicking chicken? No, it could not. And so here's other reviews from us, folks, if you wanna check those out. Here's the subscribe button so you can do that as well. And until next time, folks, just remember, you can never have too much good whiskey.